this is the objective of this chapter. First, okay, to explain the data encapsulation and the decapsulation of the network. Okay, the data is how encapsulated and decapsulated. Okay, and then the data forwarding process in the network. Okay, this is the two objective. And then we got the scenario, network scenario. Okay, in this scenario, there are the two hosts, host A, host B, in one network, and the two servers, server A, server B, in another network. Okay, then between these two network, there are the routers and the internet. Okay, then in this example, that's the host A want to access server A. And the server A is an is a server such as the HTTP server. That's the web server, okay? That's a web server. Then how do host A sending the packet, sending data to server A? The whole process. Okay. We will explain this. Okay. First the host A needed to send the data to server A. So the application layer, the application layer first sending the data. This is the data of the application layer, then sending to transport layer. Okay. In the transport layer, you can regard this as a software, as a program. Okay. This program will deal with this data. Just adding a header, adding a TCP header. Of course, uh, maybe adding a UDP header. Uh, if the TCP header or UDP header added to data, it depends on the application, okay? The HTTP, your TCP. Uh, other protocols such as uh, the DNS, okay? Such applications use UDP, then encapsulate UDP, okay? Such as VDI, encapsulate UDP, okay? This is the TCP, then the TCP header is added. The most important part is the source port and the destination port. We know that the destination port is to identify the service that's provided by the server. Of course, HTTP, the destination port is 80. Okay, this is the default destination port. And the source port is random generated by host A, okay, by host A. And then, the sequence number and all the other parameters, sequence number, acknowledge number, and the window size are negotiated when in three-way handshake, okay, the sync process, okay, the connection establishment process, okay. And then, this is the transport layer finished its job. And then, this data is forwarding to network layer, okay. In the network layer, network layer just another program or another software. Then we are adding the, another header, the arch header, to this data. Okay, in this header, of course, this is the arch header. And the most important is the source IP address and destination IP address. The source IP address is the IP address of host A. And then the destination IP address, what? This IP address, just the server A's IP address, okay? This is a destination, okay? Of course, there are some other parameters such as the TTL to avoid the loop in the network and the protocol just to figure out the upper layer is TCP, so the number should be six, okay? Uh, of course, uh, the TCP, the destination port 80, to identify this is HTTP, okay? Then, the host A knows that destination should send it to destination. Then, where to send? Where to send? Of course, the host A should looking into the routing table of itself, routing table, okay? Uh, of course, usually the host uh, the losing table is very simple, just the default gateway, okay, the gateway address. So, this is the 
default gateway. The gateway is this address. Okay, this address just in the same network. Okay, so after the packet is encapsulated with layer three header, then should encapsulate with the layer two header. Okay, this is uh, this is data. And then this is a layer four header, and this is a layer three header, and then should encapsulate with a layer two header, okay? Layer two header, okay? Then the, this packet, the host know what is the destination in the same network. Then should encapsulate with layer two. In the layer two, there are two three parameters. Of course, the type to point out this is an IP. So this is a zero, eight, zero, zero. And then the source MAC address, source MAC address is host A's MAC address. That's simple. And then the destination MAC address, destination MAC address. Destination MAC address is what? Is the gateways MAC address, just this MAC address. Okay, so we can see the address in a frame, there are two layers. The layer three's address, just the destination of this packet, server A's address, and the layer two address, the destination MAC address, just the next hops MAC address, okay? Then, what is the destination MAC address? Of course, the host A first should find, should look up in the app cache. App cache. This is the app table. Of course, if find in the app cache the gateways MAC address, then the RG packet should encapsulate it with layer two with this MAC address. If the host A not exist, this gateways MAC address not exist, then the host A should use the ARP process to resolve the gateway's RP address, okay? Then, after get the MAC address of the gateway, then the packet, the RP packet, is forwarding to layer two, and then the layer two, this is the RP packet, the layer two should encapsulate with the layer two header and the FCS from checksum. Okay. And then in the Ethernet, if it's Ether2, then this is the destination MAC, source MAC, and the type. Of course, the type is IP, that's the 0800. Okay. And the source MAC is itself, and the destination MAC, okay, it's a gateway's MAC address. Okay. Then after get the MAC address, then this data can sending out, okay, can sending out. Okay, when the data want to sending out, that means sending to the physical layer signals. So, first, the data should have some uh, fixed format. That's the preambles, preambles, uh, preamble signals and uh, start of frame delimiter. Okay, that's the one zero, one zero, one zero, and so on. That's the 55. And then the other fix one zero, one zero, and the last uh, one one. Okay, this is the start of the frame delimiter. And then this is to make the receiver to know what is the start of the frame. Okay, and then this frame can send into the physical media. Okay, before sending, we know to use the media, there is a mechanism we call CSMA CD. Okay, that means before sending, the host A should listen to the media that if there are others using this media, if there are others using this media, then hold on. If no one use, the media is idle, then sending out. Okay. Of course, should it detect the collision if the collision is happened. 
Okay, then the data is standing out. Okay, that standing out. When the data is standing out, all the device on this network, how the B, the router A, will all receive it. Okay, after receive it, the the, the device can using the fixed fixed format, the preamble and the start of the frame delimiter, then no, the beginning of the frame. Okay, the beginning of the frame. And uh, in the frame, the device can see the destination MAC address and the source MAC address. Of course, source MAC address just decide who is the source, and the destination MAC address will compare with the MAC address of the interface. And then, if it's equal, that means this frame is sending to sending to me. Okay. If it's not equal, then this frame is dropped, not received. Okay. Then, of course, this MAC address is the gateway's MAC address. So the router A will receive, will receive. Of course, uh, before receive, there's a uh, error checking. The FCS will check if this frame is destroyed. If destroyed, then not accept. If not destroyed, then accept. After accept, then decide if the destination it's uh, it's itself. Okay. Then after receive, then the ESO2, the layer two header is dropped. Is stripped okay that's the decapsulation after the layer 2 header is stripped then leave the, this IP packet okay then the router will look into the IP header into the IP header so in the IP header there's source IP and the destination IP then using destination IP to look into the routing table routing table in in itself in router A's routing table. And then router A's routing table will tell the router what is the outgoing interface and what is the next hop. Okay, next hop. Just like the host A knows the gateway. Okay. There's a next hop. Next hop. Okay. Then the router knows the next hop then need to send this packet to next hop then what happened looking to the upper cache okay looking to the upper cache and then if a cache exists then knows the destination this next hops mac address okay and then if not know using the arp until knows that destination that next hops mac address and then this IP packet still encapsulated an ESO2 header. Okay, the source MAC address is the outgoing interface MAC address. The destination MAC address is the next hops MAC address that sending out on this media. Okay, then the next hop will receive, and then each hop repeat this process. Okay, repeat, just repeat, and then step hop by hop step by step then the packet reached the last hop router okay this is the last hop router and then the last hop router also using the IP packet using the information in the IP header in the IP header then the destination IP looking into the routing table then knows this IP address is connected to this interface. Then also using ARP or looking into the app cache to know the destination IP's MAC address. Okay. If we get the MAC address, then this packet will encapsulate with the ESA2. Okay. Then the type is IP packet. Okay. That source MAC is this interface MAC address. And the destination MAC, just the server A's MAC address. And then using the CSMACD mechanism sending to the media. After sending to the media, then 
all the servers, server A, server B will receive it. Then, the server A matched the destination MAC address, then knows this packet is sending to me. And the server B did not match the destination MAC, so server B dropped this packet. And then, after server A received, then the layer 2 header is stripped, is decapsulated, okay? And then get the IP packet. Get the IP packet. And then the server A check the destination IP. This destination IP just equals the IP of the server A. So the server A knows this packet just reached to me. Okay, so the server A will identify the protocol, the protocol number. Of course, this is a six. Six means this is a TCP segment, okay? This is a TCP segment. So, this IP header will be, will be stripped, decapsulate, and then this packet, the upper layer information we are sending to the TCP process, okay? TCP process. And uh, of course, there are some information such as this for fragment. If this is a frag, that means the packet have be fragmented in the in the in the in the forwarding path. Then in this server will be assemble them, assemble them together. Okay? And then this packet is sending to the this segment. Okay. The layer four we call segment. The data, the PDU in the layer 4 we call segment. And then the segment is sending to the TCP. Okay. And then the TCP process, we are using the TCP header. We can see the source and we can see the destination, AT. The AT means this port number, destination port number means this is an HTTP segment. Okay. That's uh, sending for the HTTP application. So, this packet, this header, the layer 3 header will be stripped, and then the data is sending to HTTP process. Okay, then in your explorer, you can see the information. Okay. This is all the process, the data sending from one side to another side. Of course, if you're sending data backward, the server to host A, it's the same, okay? Just reverse the path, okay? And in this process, we know what is the, all these mechanisms work together. The physical media, the CSM, CD, okay? And uh, the Ethernet, Ethernet, the MAC address. The MAC address is to find the destination inside one network, okay? And then the IP layer, the IP layer, the upper mechanism, and the IP address is to identify the source of this packet and the destination of this packet, okay? Uh, so we can know the difference between the IP address and the MAC address, okay? Yeah, there are two addresses, but the MAC address just to find the destination inside the one network, but the IP address is used for global addressing. Global addressing. Okay. Okay. In to find the destination and the source globally in the whole network, in the internet network. Okay. And then the TCPs, TCP header, you have to identify what is the application by the port number. Okay. And then we get to the end of this uh, chapter, and there is a summary, and uh, there are some questions. What information is required for data before data can be encapsulated? Uh, each layer needs different information. For example, uh, for layer two encapsulation, we need the MAC address, okay? Destination MAC address and source MAC address and destination MAC address, we should use the ARP to reserve, okay? And uh, for the layer three, we need a what? Source IP address and source destination address, okay? 
and the therefore we need the source port, source port number and the destination port number. Okay, each layer needs a different information. Okay, and then uh, second question: What happens when a frame is forwarded to a destination to which it is not intended? Uh, forwarding to a destination that means the host or the device, the network received a frame. That's not sending to me. Okay, then what? How does the device to decide this frame is not sending to me? Is not intended sending to me? Okay, use the destination MAC address and the destination MAC address. Okay, if the destination MAC address not match the physical MAC address, uh, burned in on my device NIC, so. This frame will be dropped, just dropped, okay? And uh, if the destination IP is not equal to my IP, uh, I think there's, uh, uh, depend on different device, okay, there's a uh, different process. For the router, we are looking into the routing table and then forwarding to the next hub, okay? And for the host, if not enable the routing, and then we are dropped it, okay? Because the destination is not uh, destination IP is not me, and I cannot forward it out. Then drop it, okay? And then third, how does the data in the frame ultimately reach the application it is intended for? Uh, reach the application. That's the transport layer to sending a packet to the certain application. Of course, we know that TCP support many applications such as the Telenet, such as uh, FTP, and the and the, and, the, and the HTTP. That's the web web browser and so on. And then, which when the transport layer when the TCP gets the segment, then which application should send to? How do the transport layer? How do the TCP to decide decide on the destination port number? Okay. The destination port number is decide what application this segment is belong to. Okay, yeah, and then the last question is: When multiple sessions of same application are active, how does the return data reach correct session? Okay, as we know, if there's two two PC access one server, so they are decided by the IP address. The two PCs, two hosts, must have different IP address. That's easy. But if there is one PC, one device, of course, for example, uh, one device, you open two Explorer, and then access the same information, same web page. Okay, then how do the data knows should send into this window and uh, this another window. Yeah, it's depend on the source port. Of course, this is the explorer. So the destination ports are always 80, the 80. But the source port, I have said, this is random choose by the source host, okay? By source host. And then maybe this is 2000. And uh, this is 3000. Okay. This is the source port and destination port pair. And the server can decide this is the application, this is the segment forwarding to HTTP, HTTP application. And uh, the source port just identify this is the uh, Window one and this is uh, window two. Okay, use the source port to identify. Okay.